would like to greet all of my friends and colleagues all over the world. I can tell you that I remember each one of you with such clarity, from my first students at McGill, through the flute class at the University of Toronto, and then Juilliard, the Manhattan School, New England Conservatory, and Carnegie Mellon University. In these days of time for reflection, I am even more grateful for the remarkable times in music I've enjoyed with each of my former students, and now, dear friends, and my precious colleagues from the Montreal and Toronto symphonies, and of course, the New York Philharmonic. I have been in touch with a number of you in these last weeks, and I wanted to be able to write a few words that might be of help in these times of isolation and distance from true music making, which is so central to our lives. In my conversations and messages, those that I've received, a thread of concern and confusion has been expressed to me about the simple act of practicing in these unprecedented times. How well I understand, even in the best of times in my career as a flutist, artful and disciplined practicing was never something that came easily to me. I loved playing with other musicians more than anything in the world, but I had to learn and work hard to become good at practicing, and that lasted for my entire career. How well I remember when still a student, I would just marvel at some of my classmates who could practice for hours and seemed to do it with such ease. For me, Practicing was always an activity that I had to relearn each time, every day, that I would practice. In simple terms, it was often one of two things. I had too little time to practice, or I had too much time to practice. Either one made it hard for me to discipline myself. I guess one could say I wasn't naturally talented at time management. Of the two situations, however, the latter was by far the greatest challenge. Having a lot of time in a day was the greatest enemy of my being productive in my practicing. I was one of those people who could say, as Duke Ellington famously said of himself, I don't need time, I need a deadline. And nowadays, when a structured schedule has been put on pause for most of us, a deadline is a scarce thing. For so many, these days have presented challenges unlike any we have ever faced, in every area, and not only as musicians. In my conversations, it has become so clear to me that there is a great difficulty for many to be able to simply concentrate and work on the flute, and to even feel the inspiration that would encourage playing the flute for enjoyment and fun. The reasons are so easy to understand. For some, it is very distracting at home due to the disruption of family life. For others, there's a lack of immediate and compelling reasons to practice. For some, even the very thought of practicing causes a kind of anxiety and unhappiness. And for others, there is just a lack of energy to even take the flute out of the case. If I were still actively practicing, I would check every single one of those boxes and about 10 more. I completely get it. First of all, each reason is completely valid and understandable. And I would want to tell each of you that if you are experiencing a distancing from your instrument, this is a normal reaction to the upheaval of our lives in music. Being a musician is, by its very nature, a communal and shared art. To be suddenly deprived of this critical aspect of music making that is such a core element in our love of music is a completely human and understandable reaction. The most important thing to me that you can let go of the layers of guilt and confusion over the sad and frustrating feelings of separation from the flute. That is the first thing to give yourself a big break and realize that your way back to the flute begins with accepting these negative feelings, not as a fault, but as a natural and reasoned reaction to an extraordinary time. 
In my next posting, I want to begin to describe how I learned to understand practicing in a way that enabled me to be productive and creative when my heart and mind were not helping me. Last of all, my admiration to all the students and teachers that are engaged in online lessons. I think you are all amazing to be finding your way in this new world so that you retain vital normalcy and connection and consistency in your work together. And to all of those who are not hampered in their work in these times and have been posting and creating online lessons and classes and formats, thank you for your energy and your generosity. I will look forward to more of your wonderful contributions. Also, I look forward to writing and to speaking to those of you who may take some benefit from my own experiences connecting to the flute when I felt such distance. I know there is a way back. It is not even difficult. Just remember the first step, no guilt. Just anticipation of all the new lessons ahead of you to be learned. Last of all, I want to thank Su Kyung Park, Jin Young Choi, and Lorraine Han for their invaluable help to me in this project. For those of you who know me, you know that without their technological expertise, this would never have happened. I send you all my very best wishes until the next time, which I hope will be very soon. Good night.